All right, we are uh, working on understanding um, understanding how web dev works with the Go programming language. If you want to take the whole course, right there and right here, it's awesome. Uh, and it's uh, taught more concisely than in class. We get a little bit rambly in class. But now we're going to take a look at it. And uh, we have learned about listen and serve takes an address, 8080, it's a string, colon 8080, takes something of type handler. We learn what type handler is, and let's just read this a little bit, and then we're going to look at default serve mux. We're going to step back and take a look at what that is. A handler responds to an HTTP request, doot, 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 request. Serve HTTP should write reply headers and data to the response writer and then return. So it writes the reply headers. You all know what headers are after last week's boring week. <laughs> last week, the end of class, you all look like you never wanted to come back. And data writes the headers and data to the response writer. And then return. Returning signals that the request is finished. It is not valid to use the response writer or read from the request body after or concurrently with the completion of the serve HTTP call. Whew. Okay. <laughs> A little bit over my head. But it also kind of makes sense. Depending upon depending on this HTTP client software, so the client making the request. HTTP protocol version, so are we using 1.1 or HTTP2, and any intermediaries between the client and the Go server, so is there something in between there that's, you know, what would be between the client and the Go server, like, what's that cloud thing that Facebook uses? I don't know. It may not be possible to read from the request body after writing to the response writer, okay. Cautious handler should read the re request body first and then reply. Except for reading the body, handler should not modify the provided request. If serve HTTP panics, the server, the caller of serve HTTP, assumes that the effect of the panic was isolated to, active, to the active request. It recovers the panic, logs a stack trace to the server error log, and either closes the network connection or sends an HTTP 2 REST stream, depending on the HTTP protocol, to board a handler so the client sees an interrupted response, but the server doesn't log an error panic. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, stuff, stuff, stuff. Interesting. Always good to just, like, see what you can get from it. Not necessary to know. Let's come back to this. The handler is typically nil, in which case default serve mux is used. This is the third stepping stone in understanding the net HTTP package. First stepping stone we did, listen and serve, address, which is of type string, and a handler, which is of type handler. And then the second stepping stone was understanding type handler. Anything that has this method is also type handler. Any type that has this method is also type handler. That's the second stepping stone. So listen and serve says, I'll listen on port 8080, and I'll use this handler to handle the request and write the response. And then the handler is like, I know how to serve HTTP. Give me the request. I'll write the response. So those two are working lockstep, right? They're working with each other. And then the next thing to know is that if we give nil as our handler, we're calling default serve mux. I want to explore that. I want to explore that. So I'm going to search this page for default serve mux. There's 11 mentions of default serve mux. I'm going to go and just kind of scroll through and just sort of take a glance at where they're being mentioned. So that's like the 11th mention. Here's the first mention on the entire page. Listen and serve starts an HTTP server. 
because it's got listen and serve, ask for a handler, and anything of type handler serves HTTP, which handles the request and response writer. So listen and serve starts an HTTP server with a given address and handler. Sweet. The handler is usually nil, so they're giving you a big hint here. The, right, the developers of this language are saying most of the time you're just going to put nil in there as the handler, in which case it means to use the default serve mux. Handle and handle func add handlers to default serve mux. So default serve mux. What's a serve mux? First time I was learning about all this, I was like, mux? What's a mux? It's a multiplexer. Multiplexer is another name for something that does routing and engineering. So it could be called a mux, it could be called a multiplexer, it could be called a serve mux, a serve multiplexer, a server. Default serve mux is just like a server, right? Multiplexer. It says this route, you go here, this route, you go there. Forward slash cat, you go here, forward slash dog, you go there, right? If I'm at, you know, localhost 8080 forward slash cat or forward slash dog, right? One route, another route, multiplex this way, multiplex that way. So default serve mux, handle and handle func, add handlers to default serve mux. Here's HTTP handle, foo, foo handler. Here's HTTP handle func, bar. So at this route, foo, run this. At this route, bar, run this whole function. All right? What's the difference visually? I mean, like, here it is. This is it. When HTTP listen and serve, has nil, it's calling default serve mux, and handle and handle func add handlers. Right? Handlers, this is type handle, ler, type handler. So it adds handlers, like it's gonna help handle stuff. And look at what a handler is. Func, response writer, pointer to request, right? So it's a function that has that signature. Now it's not with that method, but it's a function with that sig signature. It looks really similar to this, this right here, response writer request, response writer request. But the thing that you could see here, I mean this is the elegance right here. Type handle foo, type handle funk bar and then do I mean we could take this code and we could go here fault serve mux I'm going to take that code and where's my main this is all gone. That's all gone. Put all that there. Come on, baby. Put that there. I messed some stuff up. All right, we're almost there. Why are you barking? Oh, these guys want to be in main. I don't know what package HTML is. HTML template, HTML, there we go. Why is it not, and we have escape string, why is it not bringing in HTML? There we go. 
And uh, I could do foo handler, font foo handler. And, uh, and I need that to be probably with this. And, uh, and I'm going to do, here they did F print F writing to a file, right? I, and if you look at that, file print with formatting, formats according to format specifier and writes to W. It takes a writer, right? So we F print F and pass in the writer right there and then write this string. And uh, on this one, I could use io.write string, which takes writer, pass in the writer. And I could write this string. Now, the only question is, is why cannot use foo handler type func dun 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 as type net HP handler, net HP handler. So my signatures may be wrong. So let's go look that up. So there it is, and I need handle and handle func. So I'm going to look in the index for handle. A pattern, I need a pattern and a handler. I need a handler. So here I need a pattern for handle func, and I need a handler, which is a func response writer pointer to request. I need a value of this type. So here I need a handler. So how can I make foo handler, a uh, function foo handler a handler? Well, this would work, right? Because that takes a function with that signature. So in this case, I have handle func and foo handler, and I have this function with that signature. In this case, I have handle func, and I've just placed the function right there. But I want to see how to use handle. So, foobar, what goes with foobar? Is there anything else? Foobar, there seems like there should be one more. What is it? What's Baz? Baz? Yeah. And this one is going to be Baz Handler. And so for the Baz Handler to work, I need I don't know. And then I need what kind of a thing here? Serve HTTP and HTTP response writer and a pointer to an HTTP request and io.write string writer hello from Baz. And then var baz handler. Why is it uh, not? Let's see what that says. Unresolved reference baz handler. Unused variable baz handler. I've named them differently. You see how the case is different? Case sensitive. And let's see what it says now. Cannot use baz handler type GitHub goes to 11 dot 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 default as type net HP handler more. Why can't I? That's a handler. It's hot dog. It has serve HTTP. Did I get this wrong? Response writer, pointer to request. Response writer, pointer to request. And var as handlers of type hot dog. Oh.
Should be all right. Tell me more. That's all you're going to tell me. It looks good, doesn't it? What am I missing? Serve HTTP. Oh, look at what it needs to be. Capital HTTP. Capital HTTP. Exact signature. See that? Capital HTTP. I didn't have cap. Now look. Oh, I'm cool because you're inter you're implementing the interfa uh, handler interface now. You have that method with this exact signature. Let's run it. This one is uh, pulling out the URL path. And here's something that's interesting. If I do bar another, not found. But if I add a forward slash in front of bar, it says catch anything downstream that isn't more precisely matched. Let me repeat that. If I add this forward slash after my route, notice bar has it. Foo does not have it. Foo does not have it. Bar has it. Now what this means is bar will catch anything down route not more precisely matched. Let me show you what that means. I'm going to restart my server. Come back here, refresh, all right, more stuff downstream. So that little slash afterwards says catch anything downstream that isn't caught more precisely by something else. But foo is not going to do that because foo doesn't have that slash. Foo works. Foo something doesn't. It's interesting, right? So we took this code, whoops. We took this code. Which I lost. So we were looking at listen and serve. And then we said, let's find out about default serve mux. And then we got to default serve mux, and we saw this example, and we took this code, and we got it to run. Handle, we'll take a handler, and we saw, you saw how I created a handler. So handle. Let me put this up here so it matches the code. Handle takes a handler. So handle, handle takes a handler. And you saw how I created a handler here, right? By something with that method. And handle func takes a function with this signature. All right? So if we look at what handle func is, Handle func is something, of a value of this type. That's the type. Functions are first class citizens, like an int or a string. They're a type. So it takes a value of that type. It takes a function with that signature. So a handle takes a handler. A handle func takes a function with that signature. Handle func, we're giving it a function with that signature. Handle func, we're giving it a function with that signature. We'll review this in the next video.